Hello, VIPs. Holy buckets of crazy hair. It's fine. It's fine. Hi, guys. I am really, really excited to hop in today, super casually, to talk about the different ways that I used to do and will continue doing spelling in the special needs classroom setting. So these are all ways that I've used it previously, and there are a couple of ways that I'm kind of adding in for you after doing the super fast Pinterest search of just different activities to do in your classroom that don't include you just holding up a note card and saying, what is this word? So these are all different activities. You may use the note cards, um, but these are gonna be fun outside of the box activities that are gonna get kids excited about learning their sight words, practicing reading their sight words, and all that fun stuff. So are you guys ready? I'm so excited, so let's get started. So the first way that you can do spelling and practicing sight words in your classroom is pretty simple, um, just using magnetic letters. So this huge magnetic letter set kit is from Lakeshore Learning. Um, I bought it last fall when they did their 20% off sale. I'm trying to, um, it just has them all sorted out. My very good friend, Allie, at Just a Primary Girl, has the most amazing alphabet maps, and I will link them after. I didn't even think about it. They're basically, you get a cookie tray, and you print out the map that she's created for you. These letters fit perfectly on it, and it keeps them sorted in alphabetical order for the kids. And then you can show them a flashcard and say, will you spell this word? You can put the... Um, put the magnetic letters up on a whiteboard on the side of a filing cabinet um, and you can even like tape the cards up there so like if this said um, she you could make it a center an individual center like during English or guided reading something they could do independently because it's guided just have the note card up there you can I mean even use sticky notes guys like seriously use sticky notes for everything put it on the board give them 10 words and have them spell them using the magnetic letters. So there are a lot of different ways that you can use magnetic letters in the classroom. Um, so it's more than just putting them on a whiteboard or more than putting them on like their own individual whiteboard. Have them spell things um, throughout the day. You can have letters like on the outside of your door and have them identify letters or make letters when they're standing in line waiting for things. There really are so many different ways you can use magnetic letters. The first thing that I'm gonna recommend is for you guys to invest in some magnetic letters. If you don't have them already, you don't need the big set also. I know the Target Dollar Spot has magnetic letters in the Dollar Spot right now because I was there today, but don't tell my husband. <laughs> so the second way that you can practice, um, yes, totally off topic, squirrel, it's fine, that's me, that's my life, thank you. Um, 400 million people told me on Instagram that I needed to get the shirt, so I caved and I got the shirt. So thank you guys. Anyway, back to the topic. The second way you can use do sight words in your classroom or do spelling is with Play-Doh. Now I couldn't find any Play-Doh in my bins, so I grabbed this TheraPutty, which is great. If you don't have TheraPutty in your classroom for like sensory integration, you need to get some. It's the best stuff ever. Um, basically what you do is you show them a sight word or you tell them a word that you want them to practice and they just form the letters of the word. So they're just going to roll them. Um, this is not very good. Well, you could roll this, but it's thicker. It's more for like OT. Um, but use Play-Doh. Have the kids spread the Play-Doh out, make hot dog rolls and spell the words using the Play-Doh. That's always really fun. And it's always a great fine motor test too. That was a favorite in our classroom. You can also get... I believe the Play-Doh brand sells stamps, like alphabet stamps. So if you wanted to have them flatten out the Play-Doh on the table, which is great for fine motor as well, you can have them stamp out the different letters, which we also did on fun, fine motor Friday. So we did fun food Friday, coffee cart Friday, and fine motor Friday all in one day. But it wasn't just like, here's some Play-Doh, have fun. Like, it was academic too, but they thought it was fun. Like if they thought it was just a play day, but it wasn't, it was very structured. Um, the third way that you can practice is a lot of fun, but it's also can be very messy is to just get some shaving cream at the Dollar Tree, put it on the table and let them use their fingers in it to spell words. That's always really fun. I remember doing it with my kids the first year that I taught self-contained and I had one student who left it, that table just like, 
he just loved the sensor. He was, like, putting up his arms. I mean, there were three of us watching all of these kids, and he was just, like, covered in shaving cream. So, um, make sure your kids aren't eating it. You may, like, whipped cream would also be good. You could do whipped cream, but I feel like shaving cream is probably cheaper. But if you know you have kids who are, like, very sensory and want to eat everything, maybe try whipped cream. I've never done whipped cream, but it just came to mind. Um, number four, you can also use sand. So get a lid. I'm just pulling this lid here. Doesn't have to. It could be any size. Or get a tray. Target Dollar Spot has trays this year again, guys. And just put a little bit of sand in it. They can use their fingers. Give them a paintbrush. And in the sand, they can spell the letters. So that's another great way incorporating fine motor into spelling different words that's not just like, okay, what is this word? The next way is a way that I created specifically for my classroom. Um, if you click the link above, it says something. It says you may also enjoy the kindergarten spelling curriculum. So the kindergarten word list is included. The fall folders that I'm going to show you are included in that. If y'all think you want me to upload this as like its own thing, let me know and I will. I have it all ready. Basically what I did was I created word cards for I think it was all the Dolch words, but then I also pulled in like Fry words and like first grade spelling lesson, like the district spelling list. So it's not just Dolch. The blue ones, I believe are fourth grade. I don't remember, but okay. So yellow is, I had it color coded. Yellow is second grade. And what I did was inside I took, these are just binder spine label holders. I made the cards to fit, they are two inches, to fit two inches. And then I can slide these cards, and I'm sorry the glare, I literally can slide these cards in and out of the pockets, okay? This is Velcro, and then they each have their own Velcro mat full of letters. So I could give them this file folder, it'd be ready to go. So this may be something that you could keep in their colored bins. Say, go get your spelling folder from your bin. They know exactly what it is. Go grab it. They have, I keep it like this. So they open it up. Their words are inside. The letter mat is inside. And all they're going to sit and do is do, is spell, spell the words that are in here. I don't like the glare. I need to shut the window. Okay. So this is something that I specifically created for my class because I had a lot of my very first year in self-contained, I had a lot of students who were non-readers and or not, they were non-readers. They're also non-writers and I needed a way for them to practice spelling that wasn't me hand over hand writing words with them. It wasn't fun for them. It wasn't fun for me. And it wasn't something they could do independently. And I wanted to be able to give them something that they could sit in a center and potentially do by themselves. Or if I was doing one on two, like just me with two students, I could have them both working on this, working on different words at the same time, but it's very individualized. So I created a bunch of just different, um, I pr printed all the word cards. Again, if y'all want them, just let me know and I can add them in for y'all. And then to create the letters, so instead of cutting out all of the letters, I was like, I am not sitting here and cutting all of these letters out. Y'all want to know what I did? I went to Michael's, used a coupon, and bought sticker letters. And I laminated them in a laminating pouch. So I literally took a scotch laminating pouch, put the sticker, and separated them all. And then I just cut around the stickers. So that's why they look so perfect. And then I just stuck the Velcro on the back. Is that not, I feel like that was like one of my more genius moments so I don't have to cut the letters out. I just laminated stickers from Michaels. You can get stickers from anywhere, but Michaels, I know you can use your coupon. P.S. Today, Michaels has a 50% off coupon that's only good for today. So if you're going to Michaels to get stickers, use that coupon. So that is another way to use it. It's great for your students who um, don't have the fine motor ability yet to, to write on their own. It's a great independent task for them to do that way. That was number five. So number six is to get stamps. I love stamps. You can also use stickers, but stickers, you're gonna have to replenish them and it could get expensive. Kids love stickers, but kids also love stamps. So this is actually one of my IEP work bins that the live that I'm gonna be doing on Tuesday, next Tuesday, is about how to do IEP work bins. So I have a couple made up that I pulled um, from my closet that were in my last classroom. 
So all I put in here are magnetic letters and then there's also, so these are just, these are the lowercase ones and then these are uppercase. So I just got, I think I got these off of Amazon for a couple dollars. And then I got these from Amazon too, I'm believing. They're just alphabet letters. I don't know. No, that's not what I thought going to happen. Okay, so we have alphabet letters. Now I'm just going to throw them all back in here. Alphabet le letters, you give them the word cards and then, or you can write it, just give them a piece of a uh, regular paper, write a word in marker, have them trace it with a pencil or something if you want it, and then you can have them stamp it out. And I have a stamp pad with different stamp colors on it. Obviously, this is a new one that my kids didn't use because the colors are going to get all mixed up because it's just stamping and making black. I had a student who loved the color black and everything she wanted to do, she wanted to do in black, which is fine, but there's no black ink pad, so she would stamp all of them. Um, and I would have like the letter S on every single stamp pad in like dark, dark, dark purple. So stamps are great too. You can also use those stamps on Play-Doh. Um, but I don't recommend, like that's not my best recommendation, but you can if you wanted to. Uh, but I do recommend like getting the Play-Doh stamps that I'm pretty sure Play-Doh brand sells. So you could do that. The next idea, so idea number seven, is to get pencil, not pencil, popsicle sticks. I have my list written here. Popsicle sticks. Go to the Dollar Tree, get yourself some popsicle sticks. Okay, they can be this, the color they normally are. You can get colored ones, whatever you want. At the top of each popsicle stick, you're going to write a letter. And then you're going to use your word cards. Okay, so you can write them however you want. You can write them on the table. And then have them use the popsicle sticks to just spell the word out. So that makes it super fun and fine motory because they have to find the sticks, pick them up, put them on the table. If you want them to stand up, like upright, and give them more fine motor, just take some Play-Doh, make like a mound on your table, and then they can put the sticks in to spell the word across. So that's a good idea. Number eight, I love writing on the desks and the tables with Expo markers. So the kids love doing it too. They like to see me write upside down. So can y'all write upside down and backwards too? That's like a teacher thing to do, right? So I would usually model and I would write the word at the top and then they would take their marker and write it underneath mine or trace mine, um, whatever level they were at. So I love writing on our tables with Expo marker. You can do it on whiteboards as well. Um, but most, most tables for classrooms, um, you can use Expo marker on them and it comes off. I recommend buying stock in Magic Erasers because you can write Expo marker on your desks, on your whiteboards, and on lamination. And it comes off with Magic Eraser. Number nine, I can count, nine. You can do Go Fish with flashcards. So maybe you're using flashcards in your classroom already. Make a second set. Or even if you have your students make them, okay? So you have your students make their cards, maybe they're only working on 10 words. So they're gonna, each student is gonna write their own card. So maybe you're working on the word she, so then one student will write she, the other student would write she, okay? And then just play go fish with them until they find all the matches. So it's a great way to do social skills at the same time with practicing and playing a game, taking turns, writing. I mean, that one's full of a bunch of different ideas. Number 10 is a great one to do outdoors. You can play hopscotch. You can also, you could do it indoors too if you wanted to make hopscotch with uh, painter's tape on your carpet or on your floor because painter's tape is gonna come off and not, um, it's not gonna be hard to come off. It's, or you can use um, washi tape. Washi tape is great. It's very similar to painter's tape, but it's a lot thinner. Um, but you can play hopscotch. So you can take um, different words and put them, either write them in chalk outside on the, the concrete and they can as they put their foot on each one they can make the word or read the words to you or you can have them throw a bean bag on a certain word and hula hoops or that's actually another idea so there that's two ideas in one um, but you could do some sort of hopscotch which is also gross motor so that would be a lot of fun too um, number 11 <laughs> is something that I learned at the I went to a learning without tears training in the fall and it was fantastic. If you ever have the opportunity to go, I did the two day training. Um, it wasn't super cheap, but it was very, very, very helpful. And I learned so much. So if you're ever given the opportunity, even for the one day or like the half day, go. But this idea comes from what I learned from them. So this is called wet, dry, try. And basically what it is, is this, you, this is a chalkboard 
this is the chalkboard for handwriting without tears. So the chalkboard, you're going to take chalk and write the word. The student is going to write the word. And then, so that's, that's the wet, dry, try. So wet is then you're going to take a paintbrush that's wet. Or they could use their finger if you want to have them dip it in like a little tiny cup of water. And they're going to trace over the word, over the um, chalk that they wrote, they're going to trace the word. And then you're going to take a little sponge. So you could take your, your cheap sponges, cut them up into little squares. That's what they did for the, comp, the Learning Without Tears conference. That, so you do the wet, dry, try. So the dry is to take the sponge and go over the wet that you just made with the finger or the paintbrush. So that's your dry, your dry. And then try is to write the word again and do it all over. So it's really fun. It's, you're running the words multiple times, but the kids don't really realize it because... It's three different things. They're using chalk, they're using water, and then they're using a sponge too. And then you can have them clean it off with the sponge at the end, which is really, really fun too. I personally like to clean it off at the end. Um, number 13, nope, number 12. You can play tic-tac-toe with your kids. This is also something you could do out at recess, or if you wanted to take painter's tape and make tic-tac-toe on your floor, make up some flashcards, or even um, you could do it on a whiteboard. Just make the, the tic-tac-toe. Each student is going to pick a word that they're going to use. So instead of X's and O's, you're going to use your sight words. Okay? And then, so instead of writing X in a spot, they would write their sight words. So she. And they just keep playing in each game. They can choose a different sight word or use the same one. Number 13 is to take a baggie, so a gallon-sized baggie, and put hair gel in it or put paint in it. Paint's really fun. Um... It can be messy. Hair gel can be messy too, though. But you could put glitter in the, into either of them too, which is really fun. Anyway, you're going to take your gallon baggie, put some paint in it. You don't need to put a whole bunch in it. Lay it on the table. You can tape it, tape it down if you want to, and then they're just going to use their finger to press into it and spell the words. Similar to using shaving cream on a table or... Um, the sand, but it's in a, it's using a baggie full of something liquid. Uh, water doesn't work, obvious for obvious reasons. So either use hair gel or paint, which is really really fun. The last one that I have, number fourteen, different ways to practice spelling and sight words in the classroom, is to use beads. So you can go to Michaels, Hobby Lobby. I know AC Moore is up home where my my parents are, or get beads that have letters on them or the letter beads. And you're gonna get, I'm blanking on the name, pop, not popsicle sticks, they're the fuzzy sticks that bend. What are they? You're gonna get those and you're just gonna use those or even string to string on the word, the, the letters to make the words of the sight words that you're using. So that's also really fun. That is something that I do in a, in a sensory bin. I take straws and I cut them up and the bins are usually this size and I will cut the straws into like half inch pieces and put them in here. And yes, pipe cleaners. And then I will put the pipe cleaners in here as well, along with the alphabet beads. And they'll have their sight words so they can put them up into the straws that are inside of this bin. And they'll take the pipe cleaner and then they'll have to find the letters to spell the word. So that's something really fun that I do and it's a really easy sensory. Um, bin that you can have all year that you don't have to change out because the sight words are going to change. So you can keep the letters in there, keep the straws in there, and it's good to go. So those are the 14 different ways that I have found for you guys and ways that I have used in the classroom to practice spelling sight words and spelling words that are not just showing the kids um, a, a flash card and saying, what is this word? While I do still do that, when we do assessments and I really want to see like what the kids know or we have like three minutes, we'll go through and use flashcards instead of going through all of this stuff to practice our flashcards. These are other ways, or our sight words, these are other ways to practice them when we're not just using the flashcards. Um, there are also apps out there that you can use. I prefer them to do something like this and not use an app. Um, but do whatever works for your students. Also, you can get on Pinterest, and if you just do sight word practice or sight word spelling, you're gonna find an incredible amount of just ideas and resources that you don't even have to like, you don't have to buy any resources from anybody. Just get the idea, and you have all the supplies in your classroom, like stamps or like popsicle sticks and beads and just stuff that you already have in your classroom that just gives you an idea of how to use it in a different way. 
So if you guys come up with any ideas, please let me know. Please share them in the comments so that we can all use different ways in the classroom and try new things with our kids to spell these sight words and give them more opportunities for spelling that aren't just write this word or trace this word or, you know, what is this word on the flashcard? So I hope this was helpful for all of you. Please let me know if you have any questions. Um, I will see you on Tuesday, next Tuesday, for IEP work bins and center bins and guided reading bins and all how to make bins and all that fun stuff. I won't be doing um, a live next Thursday that's scheduled because my family will be in town. If I can convince my five-year-old niece to um, do a video with me for you guys, I will see if I can get her to do an adaptive piece story with y'all just so I can show you how to use that in the classroom. Um, but if not, I will see you guys then the following Tuesday. So have a great weekend. Make sure to take time for you guys and really kind of have your own me day. So have fun. I'll see you later.